Good morning and welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. This morning I'm tying a furry foam crawfish. Uh, it's obviously patterned after Unqua's Clouser crawfish, but I've made a few tweaks, of course, and really enjoy this thing with the barred rabbit for claws. So let me show you how I tie this one. I tie it on a B10S Gamakatsu hook. It's a nice sharp hook with a wide gap. Thread I'm using is Vivas Power Thread. I've just started using this. It's 140 denier, just like UTC 140, but it seems to be quite a bit stronger. And since I'm tying a couple of pretty good sized dumbbell eyes on, having a strong thread makes for a good solid lock without too much time or too many wraps. What I do, this is a 532nd dazzle eye. It's brass. You can use bead chain, you can use lead. I'm going to get about 10 or 12 wraps. You can see I tied them all in the same direction. Fairly snug. And when I start to crisscross, I'm not putting any pressure on with the thread until I get about three wraps. I'm going to reach up and physically torque those and then pull on the thread. Now it's creeping towards square. Three or four more wraps. Another physical twist. There, got them squared up. And the tension between those crisscross wraps really holds that thing in place. That's pretty good and firm. Now, if you want to, you can put a little bit of super glue on it here. I'm going to start off with some pheasant tail for feelers. And to get a little brightness on it, I've got uh, Crystal Flash UV Pearl. I tied this crawfish in a number of color variations. And with the rust and oranges, I might use orange Crystal Flash. But with tan and olive, I like this pearl. Now I'm going to cut that so that the, it's about half the length of the Vesatil fibers. You can see when this thing's riding upside down, I've used the bend of the hook. So I'm going to get as much as I can sticking up off the bottom. Now, uh, for a couple of antenna, I'm using some silly legs. Get the nymph size. They're a little bit thinner, and I'm going to move in the water a little better. And this one is, what was that? That was a yellow barred, but it's close enough to this olive, it's a good match. The way I like to tie these things in is I took the one strand in and doubled it over and I'm going to tie it in by the two tips. Now I can stick my finger in that opening and kind of get one on each side. Don't go too tight here, your thread wraps can cut the silly legs, they're not that durable. And now when I trim them, i got one strand left that's long enough for an antenna on the next one, so set that aside, and every third crawfish I tie, I just pick up the two loose strands. And just an efficient use of those silly legs. Now, the shell back on this thing is furry foam. Now this stuff stretches one direction, but not the other. So when you cut it into strips, cut it the direction that it stretches, and somewhere around the hook gap's a good width. If you ever peel one of these furry foam pieces apart, you'll see it's on kind of it's the foam's on two sides of a little mesh. And the mesh is designed to stretch one way but not the other. That's where you get that characteristic. Now it's a little bit neater if you trim these corners somewhat round. And what I'm going to do is yep, got one little corner. Is I'm going to let this first thread wrap pull this thing around till it's actually on the hook side.
Now this is the part of the crawfish body that's the thickest and you can use dubbing but it seems to take a lot of time and a lot of dubbing so I've conceded to the use of chenille. This is a light olive chenille and a few turns of that and real quickly you've got a nice ball on the back. Now for legs, or excuse me, for claws, I'm going to use black barred rabbit strips and olive. And if you want to, you can pre-cut them into little pieces. What I'm going to do is tie one in on the near side. And here I've got a longer piece. This is how I usually do it. I'm going to lay this one in on the far side. And if you get those two little pieces of leather the same length, you'll have about the same amount of rabbit fur for each claw. Keep it symmetrical. Now I'm going to reach in here and cut. So if you two little leather stubs are about the same length, you'll have the same amount of rabbit on each side. Now I've got some grizzly dyed olive hackle, nice long saddle hackles. You can use hackles off of a whiting booger pack, they work very well. It's just pretty handy if you can get a nice long saddle for this one. Got that tied in. I'm going to switch to some dubbing. Now you could use chenille and finish the body and have it uh, have the same color as we started with. But I'm just going to trim some rabbit off of the other end of my rabbit skin. And since I've got these black tips, I'm going to reverse half of it, blend it a little bit. Then you don't get any black spots but you get a nice mottled color and this is going to get lost under the furry foam and it's going to be on the bottom of the fly so it's not terribly critical what you do down here and get a couple of wraps in there to hide the dumbbell so all that sticks out is the two black spots and then I'm going to dub back to the other end. If this rabbit gets unruly, just brush your hand over a little sponge, wet sponge, and you can tame it for a while. I'm going to need a little more dubbing here. Okay, not terribly neat, but again, once I put the hackle over it, you're going to lose sight of any imperfections. So, five or six turns. Now I'm going to turn this thing, what is now right side up, and pull my furry foam over the top. You see, if I stretch it, it gets fine. If I leave it relaxed, it's thick. For this first turn, I'm just going to press it to the hook without any kind of stretching and do a real loose wrap so you can get that to curve around the hook without any wrinkles or creases. And you want to tighten it up a little bit because in the next step, when you move your thread to the middle, you're going to stretch the furry foam a little bit before you make your turn. 
and you see how that's much smaller. Now I'm going to get my thread right up behind the dumbbell eyes, stretch it again, jump up to the front, one more stretch, one more tie in, and I'm at the eye of the hook. I can tie my whip finish. Okay. Now the last step's pretty cool. If you stretch this and then cut it, you get kind of a nice roundish fan shape like we like on our crawfish tails. So there you go, Clouser Crawfish.